It's another rainy day here in Saskatchewan. It is actually the sixth rainy day in a row. In order to transform my frustration about the gray and the rain into appreciation, I'm gonna read you a poem that includes some beauty about the rain. It's called Wild Geese by Mary Oliver. You do not have to be good you do not have to walk on your knees for a hundred miles through the desert, repenting. You only have to let the soft animal of your body love what it loves. Tell me about despair, yours, and I will tell you mine. Meanwhile, the world goes on. Meanwhile, the sun and the clear pebbles of the rain are moving across the landscapes over the prairies and the deep trees, the mountains and the rivers. Meanwhile, the wild geese, high in the clean blue air, are heading home again. Whoever you are, no matter how lonely, the world offers itself to your imagination. It calls to you like the wild geese, harsh and exciting over and over, announcing your place in the family of things. <laughs> do you feel a little transformed about the rain? I certainly do. There's so much beauty in this poem that speaks to so many different like aspects of our humanness and our, our pain and our suffering. We start with, you do not have to be good. How much of the turmoil that we feel in a day comes from, am I doing this well enough? Did I make the right choice? And she lovingly tells us, you don't have to be good. <laughs> we didn't all come here to just be good. Because we can't. We can't always know what is good. What is good is not always clear. <laughs> yeah, we don't have to be good. You only have to let the soft animal of your body love what it loves. And here she points to the fact that we have different parts of us. We have this intellect, this mind. We have our emotional body. We have the physical form. They all have their different lives going on. And here we are in the midst of all of this information coming in through our senses all of the time, trying to make sense of being here. But she makes it very simple for us. What if in that moment of, of grief or conflict, we just sense into the body and feel what it needs and let it love what it loves? And I personally am, oh, I love naps. I love to get unconscious in the middle of the day. Just take a break from all the goings on. I recently heard in a near death experience, there was the, a girl who asked her guides, like, how long do I have to do this breathing thing? Like, well, as long as you're here, you're gonna have to be keeping doing the breathing thing. So, um, <laughs> Oh yes, we all have our despair. And sometimes we, uh, you know, we take comfort in commiserating over it about the challenges and, and the pain. Uh, but meanwhile, this word that she comes back to, meanwhile, the world goes on, meanwhile, the sun and the clear pebbles of the rain, which is a very beautiful way to talk about the gray, wet, cold, drops that I would prefer would visit less often mm, the clear pebbles of the rain and the sun still up there still up there up above that all that cloud stuff that feels like it's pushing down the sun is up there all of this beauty going on across the landscapes the prairies and meanwhile again she says the wild geese 
are heading home again. And it this time reading it, I'm, I'm asking the question, well, which direction are they going? Are they going home when they're going north? Or are they going home when they're going south? And it's particularly poignant for me because I'm from Michigan and I live in Saskatchewan with my husband. And when I go home to Michigan, I'm going home to my family and to the comforts of where I'm from. But I leave home here and it's a heartbreak. And then I leave my family in Michigan to come back home to my husband and my dogs and my life here. And I'm leaving home, which is a heartbreak. Mm. Whoever you are, no matter how lonely, the world offers itself to your imagination. Through poetry, I will say, is one beautiful way that it offers itself to our imagination. Like, this helps me see beauty when I can't see it by myself. So, God bless you, poets. How does the world offer itself to your imagination? What things inspire you on these, oh, these stretches of difficult weather, challenging weather, whether it's a, you know, it, a blistering heat wave or a snowstorm. Um, we are subject to the elements here in this uh, physical world. And she says that the world calls to you like the wild geese, harsh and exciting, over and over. Like it doesn't give up on us, you know? Um, we can be in our dark places and we can be hurting and we can be trying to shut out the world and it keeps calling to us over and over, announcing, oh my gosh, announcing our place in the family of things. And a lot of times it doesn't feel like that, does it? It doesn't feel like um, we belong here. Sometimes it doesn't feel like it's a family, or if it is, it's a very dysfunctional family. But, um, mm, I was thinking about this poem the other day. Well, not the other day. It was before this rain started, um, as I was out walking. And from our yard, we can see, we're on one side of a valley, and we can just see the other side of the valley in the distance. And, um, and over in the sky, the wild geese. And here in Saskatchewan, they make these, these long threads of branching V's, where in Michigan, you just have a V, maybe of like 20 or 30, 40 geese. But here it's just, it seems like hundreds, where it's like a long V at the front, and then that branches into another V, and then maybe one of those V's has a branch of more geese. And just with the crunching of the leaves beneath my feet and with the dogs just kind of padding around and being able to see the other side of the valley and see the beauty of the geese. And I thought of that poem, um, announcing my place in the family of things. And at that moment, it did feel like a sense of home and a sense of belonging. Wild Geese by Mary Oliver. Um, this is the version of the book that I have. And um, I hope it helped uplift you a little bit. And I'd love to hear <sighs> which poems uplift you on rainy days.